is everyone doing today on this lovely Saturday here? Um, so we're going to be talking about a couple of things with Octoprint today and some issues that people have noticed. Now, I have not noticed these issues and I found out it's because of the way our workflow works around here. So, and that workflow is I log into Octoprint, I start a print, I close the browser. I'm not sitting there refreshing it over and over again, you know, checking the print. We just let the prints run. I'm not going back into the UI. So a couple of people that like, this has been a long standing issue with Octoprint in general, and I'm trying to hone in on the issue here. Now, everything I say is based on my own research and testing. So if anybody has anything else to add, feel free to add it but I feel like I've pinpointed where the problem's occurring. So the goal today is to go over what's occurring and why and how to mitigate those issues. So I'm gonna switch over to my monitor here. And we sent out this update here talking about what we're working on um, for the easy board and then for the 8-bit board. So we are moving forward and I can, I can show you guys this. So we have a, uh, internal management system here for our project and we've got all of our different milestones and and different things uh, and this is for the easy board so this is all the stuff that's just for the easy board here um, and then we also have a timeline here for the 8-bit boards as well and if I go here I can see all my milestones here and my timeline, my estimated timeline that I'd hopefully will be able to stick to. So you can see we're targeting like mid March to be able to get an alpha release out. And then by the end of March, have the eight bit boards ported over to Marlin two. Um, you can see this is titled two Oh four three because that's what it was. And then they released another update, but we're working on two Oh four four. And as they release new updates, we'll be porting those in. So what we're going over here is, this image right here so let me blow this up and if you guys are on our mailing list you guys have got this email here so this first image here is uh these are all done on my ender 3 pro running our, our easy board with a pi 3b plus um so you can see here all these little blobs on this print these were caused by me loading the ui over and over and over again so you can see i waited and then I closed it and I reloaded and I reloaded and I reloaded and I posted videos in our customer support group on Facebook showing the printer pausing the moment I hit the UI. So this one here is the same firmware except I'm cranking up the feed rates and at a certain point I'm hitting limitations with the firmware where it's not actually moving it any faster. This one here I increased the baud rate and uncapped the speeds in the firmware and I never open the UI. So if I open the UI, it's still going to cause the blobs. The baud rate isn't the problem here. We're gonna go over why the baud rate's not the problem. So 115, 200 baud is 115K uh, a second, which is a lot of data for G-code. Um, 250K baud is a lot of data for G-code. So one, the baud rate's not the issue here. We're gonna go over why the baud rate's not the issue. So you can see here, this is the new firmware where I've increased the buffer limits and allowed the printer to cache more moves in its buffer and the UI was hammered over and over again. And you can see here the 115, 200 and the 250K baud, there's no difference. And this was actual 200 millimeter second print speed. I went in and uncapped all the acceleration, the jerk and the velocity values so I can actually achieve those speeds. Um, and this printer is not running a stock uh, hot end setup. It's got our copper nozzle in there with a tight with uh, the Titan tough extruder that we sell. So this printer is very capable of doing high print speeds. Uh, it's one I use for prototyping here, so that's why it's got the particular setup. Um, so what I want to go over is how print speed has an effect on, and I've got some notes here, so that's why I'm looking off to the side. So print speed, um, firmware acceleration, jerk, and velocity, and how that affects not only your, we're not going to cover print quality, but how that affects this issue. Um, your feed rate, which is, you know, turning the knob on the screen and you see that FR increasing, um, or you can also do it through the Octoprint um, web UI. Uh, the max on that's 150, but you can go crazy on the LCD. Um, line segments, which is something, I believe it was CNC Kitchen covered, and that's a slicer setting. And what line segments are is how 
finally your slicer is breaking up complex moves from a model. So if you've got a curved surface like in these test prints, how, how fine is it actually going to generate those moves? Is it going to do a bunch of little ones? Because you got to remember your printer only moves in lines. So when you've got a curved surface, they're literally just a bunch of little lines to make up that curve and it looks like it's curved. Um, the, the more line segments you have, the finer the detail, um, but the more moves you have, the bigger your G-code file is going to be. So it's more for the printer to process. And if you're using Octoprint, it's more for the Octoprint setting to send. Um, and then what's being printed? I don't print a lot of organic models. I print a lot of parts and they typically have flat surfaces and angles, but not a lot of curves in general. So the reason I never saw this in our print farm or even my machines is one, I'm not opening the UI over and over again. I send my G code, I start the print, I walk away. And when it's done, I open the UI back up. The only time I'm going back in the UI is if I'm actually going to be canceling the print because something happened or I decided I want to change parameters or I don't need the part anymore. So that's why I never noticed it here because if you don't open your UI after you start the print, you just let the pie do its thing and you're not constantly going, is it done yet? How much time do I have left? How much time do I have left? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? You're not spiking the processor by loading the Python and I believe it's Python that handles the web UI. I'm not entirely... 100% sure, but there is a process that handles displaying the web UI and when you load it, it has to use CPU resources and memory resources to display that UI and send it to whatever device you're accessing it from, whether it's your computer, your tablet, or your phone. So that causes a spike in resources and them being used up to display and render that UI. Now, uh, another thing I want to go over is if you're not using a Pi 3B or higher, then you're going to have problems regardless of these tunes. You should be using a Pi 3B or higher, period. There's no arguments, there's no discussion, there's no, well, I use the Pi Zero because I'm cheap, and no. You need a Pi 3B or higher. It's actually on the official Octoprint site, and for those of you guys know that I'm not just talking out of my ass here, literally on the Octoprint site, it tells you not to use anything. Right here. Recommend hardware. Pi 3B. So... End of discussion. The Pi Zero and the Zero W have the same crappy one gigahertz single core CPU. The only reason that you will use a Pi Zero is because you're being cheap. Plain and simple. There's no other way around it. There's no reason to use a Pi Zero other than the fact that you're being cheap. Don't be cheap. So this is just that if you guys got this, this is just there's uh, stock updates and company stuff. And I'm not this isn't a, a sales video. This is a let's talk about this issue video. Um, and uh, let me just make a note here because someone mentioned Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi on the Pi's um, takes up a lot of CPU resources. So running hardwired over Wi-Fi also gives you more available resources for the Pi to run smoothly. I do not run any of our Pi's on Wi-Fi. Every single Pi here is running on a hardwired Ethernet connection with a quality power supply, whether that's me using a PoE splitter because we have PoE switches here. Most of our Pi's are powered off of a 5-volt, 3-amp PoE splitter or the 5-volt, 3-amp AC adapters that we sell with our kits and we sell on the site. So um, Wi-Fi does increase CPU load because of how it's, it's attached. I'm not going to go into that, but the bottom line is Ethernet will give you more resources over using the Wi-Fi. So if you have the option to use Ethernet, you should use Ethernet. Um, you'd even be better off getting something like, uh, let's see. You guys may have seen these. Um, it's called an, an Ethernet bridge. Um, it's a little device. There's a million different ones. I've got some from Linksys sitting around here um, that basically, come on, Google, really? Let's see. So let's see here. These usually have the function. So basically what this, what these do, and some access points have this feature, is they'll connect to the Wi-Fi and bridge that Wi-Fi signal over to an Ethernet port, which means your Pi is now on the Ethernet. And to be completely honest with you, any of these type of devices are going to have better range than the tiny little Wi-Fi antenna that's in your, your Raspberry Pi. Um, and you can see uh, this looks like an Ethernet adapter or a Wi-Fi adapter. Um, 
but there's a lot of different little devices that act as like a bridge so you can look at the properties of whatever device um there's one linksys made that's it's an older model but i got them for like 20 bucks and they're ac wireless and they have strong antennas the point is uh you can get a device that does a bridge and it makes it so your Wi-Fi is coming through to the Ethernet ports. So that's also going to be something good, and it's going to be faster and give you longer range. The internal Pi Wi-Fi, it works, but it's not that fast. Um, but yeah, so this, uh, this someone actually posted this. Uh, IB Geek on the Octoprint forums posted a link to our little, uh, our email, because it does have like a little social share. Uh, and then this guy, this guy's just being kind of a jerk. Um, you can tell Tim to stop making 8-bit controller boards. We don't make 8-bit controller boards. Do your research before you're going to go and talk shit. Um, so anyways, uh, let's talk about this. So I got this fancy little program. If anybody's got a different program that they use for doing like annotations, because you can see I can like draw and stuff here um, and do outlines. Uh, if you guys got a recommendation on a, uh, another program, this is what I could find. And uh, this is what we're going to use. So this is going to help me illustrate what the actual issue is. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the chat box so you guys can see this. So over here on the right, I have I have an Ender 3. And this little representation here, let me, let me make another box here, okay? So anything inside this box, this is, this is our buffer, okay? So this is the, these are the commands that the printer has queued up inside of it to print, okay? So... In this example, you can see here, I've got my data stream of all my G-code going over the USB cable via serial to the printer, okay? So imagine these are flowing, okay, to the printer. So, and as a printer prints, it's going to eat up, okay? As a printer prints, it's going to eat up these little commands in the queue, okay? These are print moves. But as the serial data comes over, they go back into the queue, and then they start getting replenished. Okay, so and then ideally you can see here. So these are moving through. And this is just a visual representation. This is not super technical. Okay, so as my data is getting used up here. Oh, well, the Pi needs to start sending more data through. Okay, so it's going to start sending more data through. And it's going to maintain a stream of data here. Okay, so my printers are always got stuff being sent to it. And it's got a queue here of commands. So let's say. I'm going to open the web UI, okay? So the web UI is opened. All of a sudden now, it's too busy opening the web UI, and all of a sudden, we start losing all of our data going to the printer, okay? So it's it's being taxed to the point where maybe, maybe it's got like, I don't know, maybe it's able to get like one or two packets out. So we're more sparse here. But let's see my printer's eating up this command buffer, okay, faster than the Pi can send to. So what happens is we get these these little bits of data in, okay? And our buffer's not even full. And we can see here, oh no, the printer has nothing to print, okay? Now when you're printing over USB, what's happening is the printer's just doing the moves that are being sent to it, okay? It's it's just doing what the Pi is telling it to do via the serial data. Well, if my UI is taking long to load to the point where it's choking out my serial data stream, the printer stops printing. It just sits there waiting. And what happens is when it's sitting there waiting, the filament's oozing out of the nozzle, okay? So that's where those blobs are coming from. So let's say the web UI loads, okay? Web UI loads, and now we start getting data being sent back to our printer, okay? And now we've got our buffer filling back up, and it starts printing again. Well, now we've got a blob on our print. Okay, so one of the things we can do to combat this, and this is where having a good quality board comes in handy, um, just in general, and by good quality, I mean something that's got a lot of memory. Now, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of where to go with this, so because there's different things. So things that can affect how quickly your printer is going to deplete the amount of commands it has, okay, and its buffer are the print speed. So the faster you print, the quicker it's going to go through those, okay? Whether that's cranking up the feed rate um, or you just have a higher print speed. So the faster you're printing, 
the more it's going to go through all these these data packets that it has containing these G-code moves to actually tell it to print something. So if you print slower, you're not going to see this issue even on the current setup because it's not going to it's going to take longer for it to execute those print moves. And this is where those line segments come in. Okay. So let's say my slicer sent it a ton of fine line segments. Okay. Now those segments may take only a fraction of a second to actually print. So, but they're still a command and they still take up the same amount of space as let's say I, a, a standard move of let's go all the way from, you know, X zero to 200. That's going to take a lot longer to execute than a 0.1 millimeter line on that little fine detail of a print. So if you have a print move that takes longer to complete, it depletes the buffer slower. So you might not see the issue, which explains why I haven't seen the problem here because we don't do a lot of organic prints. So one of the options is you can change in your slicer settings. I'm not going to go into that, but in your slicer, you can change in most slicers, how fine of those line segments you want to break it up into. Um, and like I, I have S3D installed, so I can show you guys real quick on S3D here. Um, I believe S3D just opened on my, oh, there it goes. So on S3D, they do have an option. Now I'm going to fumble here because I can't remember exactly where it's at. There's like a minimum. It's probably under advanced. Here, so minimum extrusion length here. So if you guys see this, this, is, this tells it how long is the minimum extrusion going to be, okay? So if you increase this value, it's going to make the mod, the print less detailed. You might not notice it. Um, and I believe this is a setting. I don't believe there's any other, there are different line segment. I want to make sure I'm, I'm just ex exhibiting this correctly. Um, I believe that's it. Cause I don't recall any other settings in S3D for the segment. Like you can see here, there's a minimum infill length too. So if you cut down on how many different types of infill and lengths, you can reduce the moves to as well as that. But the main thing is this minimum extrusion length here. So the, the bottom line is what we need to address here, because I don't know if they're even going to be able to fix it in Octoprint, because the whole, the whole issue is that when you load the UI, even on a Pi 4, it still goes for a second and cuts off the data stream. Okay. That's the problem here. It's not the printer control board, whether it's an easy board, a stock board, an MKS board, an SKR, it doesn't matter. The problem here is that Octoprint stops sending data because it's busy doing something else and it's not prioritizing the serial transmission correctly. So on multi-core pies, which you should be all on multi-core pies, unless you're being cheap and you buy really crappy old pies because you don't want to shell out the extra 10 bucks for a, a 3B at the least. Um, one way would be to isolate the serial process to one core that nothing else ever touches. So, um, and if you keep the UI open, it still can happen, but it's when you're loading, it's that initial load. Oh, oh God. <laughs> it's that initial load. Okay. That, that cuts it off. Cause it's got to render that page. It's got to give you that new page. If it's already open, your browser's got it cached. So we got, now that I'll show you what's happening here, what do we do? So we know, we know the fact that we've got a buffer on our printer and it's a certain size and it can only hold a certain amount of moves. And we know that the more moves we have in buffer, the more resilient to any print issues there are, the more, more resilient it is to any printing artifacts happening if Octoprint does cut off the flow of serial data. So one thing we can do is actually increase the buffer size. So let's say I double the buffer size here. Okay. So let's just, whatever you guys get the point. So let's say I double the buffer size. Now we can suddenly have way more commands in the queue. Okay. And if for some reason the pie cuts off that data, so we, we come here and, oh no, we're loading the UI. We need to have that. And this data stream starts getting eaten up. Okay. So and then, okay, well, we're, we're not getting any new data, but we still got stuff to print here. Okay. So oh, the UI is loaded. It's sending us new data now. And now the buffer gets filled back up. 
So that's why increasing the buffer size fixes the issue. The underlying issue is that Octoprint is stopping sending the serial data. Um, that's a fact. There's, there's no arguing with that. The fact is that if the serial data transmission was never interrupted, the buffer size, as long as it has some sort of buffer that's more than two commands, you're never going to notice it. But the reality is that the fact is right now, the way Octoprint set up as I'm making this video, when you load that UI, it goes and stops sending data to the printer. So that's not the printer's fault. Uh, the one of the guys was trying to say, well, it's it's the printer, it's the firmware. No, it's not. How does how does the printer have any bearing on the fact that it's no longer getting data? These are two separate systems: the printer's control board and its firmware, and Octoprint. Octoprint's job is to send serial data to the printer. If the printer is not getting serial data, that's not the printer's fault. That's Octoprint's fault. So this is a a band aid to cover up the fact that. Octoprint, when you are loading things and doing other stuff on it, is saying, ah, fuck the serial data process. It can wait, and it pauses it, puts it on the back burner. So the option to work around this right now is to increase the buffer size. Now, here's the problem. 1284p boards and 2560 boards have limited memory and RAM. So the I, while I'm going to test to see how far we can push the buffer sizes, you're going to have to give up some features. You're going to have to give up some options and features to get a larger baud size. So, and this is why baud rate doesn't matter. To a, to a point, when we're talking 115, okay, versus 250k baud, doesn't matter. That's 115k a second versus 250k a second. Doesn't matter how fast it's getting there. There's no bottleneck on that baud rate. The bottleneck is the fact that the Pi stops sending data. So. That's the issue here. That 115K baud rate has more than enough bandwidth to fill up that buffer and keep it full. Changing the baud rate doesn't have any effect on it. So, you know, if we were talking like 9,600 baud versus 115,200 baud, yeah, there's a big difference there. Your printer might actually crunch through it if you're setting it that low, but the reality is you're using 115,200 or 250K, depending on what your manufacturer defaults to. Most printers default to 115K. We run our easy board at 115K because all the Creality boards that these are going in, everybody's got their slicers and everything set up for 115K because there's no difference in the print quality running at 115K versus 250K. We leave it at 115K. So that's the core issue here. Um, that's really all there is to it is the fact that the workaround here until they somehow figure out how to isolate the serial data process from getting interrupted when you're loading the web interface or anything else happening on the Pi. It doesn't have to be just the web interface. It can be anything that's going to consume CPU resources. Um, it could be, opt uh, I've heard people say Octolapse has issues with it. Um, and I think Spaghetti Detective, because it's doing more processing and sending out those screenshots to their service to analyze if your print failed. Um, the bottom line is anything that's going to eat up your CPU could potentially cause these blobs because it's going to interrupt the serial data transmission. So, and one of the thing, one of the things is, and, and old curmudgeon, no one should be printing from a slicer directly on a PC. That actually doesn't happen on PCs unless you have a really ancient dinosaur of a computer uh, because your computer actually has enough horsepower to not throttle um, the serial data when it's printing. So I've printed over USB. I've never had issues with it from my computer to the printer. I don't do it unless I'm doing testing. But the problem is Octoprint goes, ah, we're loading the UI. Fuck the serial process. And then all the commands dry up and your printer stops because it's waiting for the next command. We're talking about a split second here. But depending on your buffer size and the buffer size that your printer is capable of running, it could dry up and that's where you get the pause and that's where the blobs come from. So, uh, yeah, power saving issues and Windows updates. Yeah, um, that's on them. I, I'm not an idiot. I have all that stuff disabled or tuned or set correctly. So I digress. But the core issue here is the fact that the serial data is getting interrupted. So like I said, one of the workarounds to do that is increase the buffer size. So this is our buffer size. So let's just, this is just all for visual representation. This does not have a value assigned to it or anything. Um, you know, but if we increase the buffer size so our printer has more moves queued up, it can care less about how often it's getting interrupted. Because once that data stream comes back from getting cut off, okay, 
it's going to pretty much instantly fill out that buffer because we're talking 115K a second. That's a lot of data. We're just sending text files. Um, you know, like if I if I go here and open up here. So like this is a G-code file, okay? I don't know if you guys have ever opened a G-code file. It's just text. It's literally just text. This is what you're saying. You're telling me you need more than 115K bought a second, okay, to send text, lines of text. That's it. But I mean, these lines of text can take up a lot of memory in your printer's uh, RAM to queue them up. So this is where having a control board that's got a lot of memory at its disposal can come in. So when you're printing over Octoprint, it's going, okay, sending the line, sending, 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 okay. And then the printer starts processing them and then it starts sending more lines of code. Printer processes them, you know, it starts sending more lines of code. You guys get the idea. So this is a workaround and the problem's gonna be is how much can we increase the buffer size on these 8-bit boards, okay? The 8-bit boards, especially the 1284s, were limited on space. Um, now, luckily, like the 1284s actually have more RAM than a 2560, and this is all getting stored in memory. I don't know what you're going to be able to run in terms of buffer sizes and everything. And uh, I'll show you guys here. I just want to make sure I don't have anything personal open on here. I should, I should be good. So if you guys want to, why does function, why does recovery function take a lot of space? Don't use it. It's garbage. It also just eats up your SD card. Um, so if you guys want to try playing with different buffer sizes, so this is our, um, this is our 8-bit firmware here. So if you go into the configuration underscore ADV file here. Okay. And this is on our, uh, our 32 bit board too. And I'm already working on, uh, testing. So I have to test on the eight bit. I know our 32 bit board can handle a lot more of a buffer size than the eight bits. Um, so if you just scroll down here, so you see here buff size right here, this is the value you want to play with. Okay. So Marlin defaults to four. Um, old curmudgeon said he's able to run 16 on an MKS gen L. Um, let me see here. So I've got a new repository for a new easy board. Um, let's see here. And what do we set it to? We set it to 32. I'm pretty sure we can go higher, but the reality is, uh, 32 seems to be perfectly resilient to here. Um, so, so that's what, this is the value we're playing with here. Okay. Is the buff size. Now block buffer size on both these. Um, I bumped this up on here to 64, um, on our easy board. And I believe we're at 32 or 16 on the eight bits. Okay. So these are two values you can play with. This is the one that has the most impact here. So you can see here, unless it's the WAN OI three plus we're defaulting to, four um we can probably safely run eight on most of the boards but i'm not going to make a change and push it out without testing it that's not how i roll here um i do have eight bit boards here i've got a 2560 in my custom cr10 woody's got a 1284 and then my easy 300 has got a 2560 so i got three boards um that i can test on here but i'm just showing you guys what you can play with in terms of settings and whatnot um but this isn't this whole stream isn't to talk about firmware. This this stream is to talk about and illustrate the problem that is affecting this and why it's happening. So, but yeah, um, that's about it. So the issue is that it just stops sending the data. So if it doesn't have any data being sent to it, it and the buffers run out, it's just gonna wait. And when it waits, you get the blobs because the filaments you know, sitting in the nozzle and it, it wants to leak out because it's hot. Um, it, you need, you need to be using a Pi 3B or higher. So 3B, 3B plus or the fours. You don't need a four gig Pi for the four. You're wasting your money. Get a four gig or Pi four, two gig if you want to have a four. Um, but the whole thing is if the serial data never gets interrupted from the Pi, that small buffer size doesn't matter. But the reality is that if you use an Octoprint, uh, and you load the UI for the first time, it's going to just essentially shit the bed uh, for a short second until it comes back. Um, let me pull up my video here. Um, 
and I'll share it with you guys. So let me open my, uh, where was I doing the testing here? I think it was this video here. All right, so this is the video here. So let me pull this up and do a screen share with you guys here. So main monitor and uh, here we go. So this is the video showing the issue. Okay, so listen, I'm going to mute my mic. I just realized speakers are muted. Hang on. Well, let's try that again. All right. Okay, so these blobs on this print are not from any USB issues or firmware issues. Those are from me loading Octoprint. So I'm closing my browser. I'm opening it. And I'm going to pull my Octoprint up right as we're going to come around this curve. So it's doing the inside and we're going to do the outside. I'm loading it now. And right there you see. Okay, so did you guys did you guys see the 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 split pause? Right. Right there. Okay, do you guys see that here? See how it it did that little pause there? I'll I'll show you again. I think it should be coming up right here. No, it's on the next layer. So inside, and then I do it on the outside, so I should be loading it right here. And you'll see a little blob up here, because it, it stopped for a split second. Nope. <laughs> inside, outside. I should have the audio on, because I'm narrating it in the video. There you go, right there. Do you guys see this little blob here that just happened? Right there. As you can see, it was printing fine, okay? So you can lower your line segments if you want to, but then you're going to lose some detail in theory. Will you notice it? Eh, you might not. But the, the point is, right when the CPU spiked here, okay, because I was loading the UI, the serial data went like, ah, fuck the serial data, we need to load UI. They want the UI. Okay, well, serial data just stopped. The buffers ran out. And you can see it recovers very, very quickly. Okay? So... But that's just showing the issue. Um, but yeah. So any firmware changes are just a workaround. It's not addressing the fact that the serial data is stopping. Um, this, is, this is a workaround and I could just be like, well, screw it. We can just do it, but I'm going to try to optimize it. So, and you can see here, there's all the blobs for me loading the UI. See the blob right there? Do I go back? So this blob right here is the one you guys saw. So these are all other blobs where I was just reloading the UI. I was like <laughs> closing it and F5, F5, F5. Like that's all it takes. That's how fast your plastic's going to ooze out of the nozzle because there's pressure in there. It didn't retract. It still got pressure in the nozzle. So let me, uh, I think I have another video here and Google just was like, you're going to be in the dark now. I shouldn't say Google as my home automation system. Um, so here was with the change buffer. So I'll let myself talk. So I can show you guys here. Come on, VLC, let's do this. Hang on. Okay, so just so I can show you guys here. I'm right at 115-200 baud. Um, new firmware branch. Okay, apparently VLC is just... Uh, Getting pissy with me. Let's see if it goes now.
has the block set. Okay, well, the buffer's tuned. VLC can get bent. What does my process look like here? The hell? Why are we why are we throttling here? So I've got Octoprint open. I'm going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to reopen it now. I've done this once before and it didn't show any blobs. So I'm going to just reload it now. All right, didn't see any issues there. Let me close out the tab and let me see if I can reload it right when it's coming around that curve. Okay, I'll let it do the inside and now we're gonna load it right now. And the active room page is loading. Tune block buffer sizes no matter if it pauses because it doesn't have anything for a split second and that's why your blobs stays there and your filament oozes out. Okay, so you guys get the idea. I've proven the theory and the point. Um, is it possible to somehow load only when the layer change? Um, that would be a question for the Octoprint developers. I don't deal with Python. The last time I touched Python was like 10 years ago for Counter-Strike Source Server plugin. Um, and even then, that was very basic stuff. So I'm just reporting on the issue here and... Um, you know, relaying the information and showing you guys what can be done to, you know, help basically cover up the issue. Increasing the buffer size is covering up the issue with Octoprint. Um, there's there's no way around that. The fact is that we're increasing the buffer sizes to cover up Octoprint dropping the serial to communication for a second while it's doing other stuff. So, um, yeah, I, that's what I was thinking. I meant to bring that up. So uh, there's a slowdown feature in Marlin. Um, where it'll start printing slower when it runs out of commands, which is something we might utilize. So if I switch back over here, I'm gonna go to GitHub page. The only problem with that, here's the thing, and you're gonna get some people, people complain about this. Your print surface quality is going to change based on how fast or slow you're printing. So you're now introducing a different type of artifact to your print. So you're not gonna get blobs but you're gonna get a different surface quality. So, because the plastic, if it's printing slower, the plastic's becoming more molten because it's got more time to sit in the heat, in the nozzle, in the heater block. So, you're still, you're still covering up or trying to cover up issues. Um, and I can't remember if slowdown is in ADV. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, this right here, if the defined movement slow down when the look ahead buffer is only half full, it's going to slow down here. So, uh, but there's also a minimum planner speed. Okay. So it only go down so far. Um, and that's in the configuration ADV. And I, I want to say I have that enabled already in our firmwares. So let me just check. Let me load up here and check. I'm pretty sure I think slowdown's enabled. Yes, it is. So I already have slowdown enabled in our 8-bit branch that's currently out. And I'm not sure. Let's see if I have it enabled in. It's enabled in our 32-bit branch. So those two options are still active, and it's not it's not helping the problem. So uh, that that idea is out the window because that's already enabled. Um, yep. Uh, there's also your minimum segment time, which here. So, oh God, oh, I zoomed in too fast. It's like CAD mouse that I'm using. It has like an auto scroll thing. Um, but there's a bunch of different settings that you can play with. The problem is, as you start changing all these different settings, you're gonna start getting other weird artifacts on your printer. Um, I'd rather not mess with this type of stuff. If we can increase the buffers on all the boards, then that would be ideal. Um, let me see. I'm trying to see how much RAM we have available on here. I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, there is a table. So this is the data sheet for the LPC 1769, which is what we're using 
on our easy board. So we've got a total of 128K of RAM on that chip and 512K of flash. So this is for ours. Now, if we pull up the 1284P, is this gonna have it? Usually the data sheets will tell you. So compared to the 1284P, 16K. So I've got 128K on my easy board. We got 16K on the 1284P. So one, one eighth of that. Um, so, and I think the 2560 is 8K. So that's why I don't like crapping on the uh, 1284. It's limited on memory for program memory, but RAM, it's actually pretty good. Um, let's see here. Is this going to have what I'm looking for? That's the layout. There we go. So here, 2560, 8K RAM. So this has 1 16th of the memory of our easy board. The 1284P has 1 eighth of the memory of our easy board. Uh, let's see what the, the SKR minis that everybody loves to beat their dicks over. Um, that's the STM32F104. Oh no, it's 103. Should be the 103, let me see. F one oh three RCT six. I have no idea what this has. What does this have? So this has half the memory of our board. So up to sixty four K. Oh, up to. Okay, so it depends on the the part number. So they're using the RCT six. So let's see how much the RCT six variant has. So they're using the RCT6, which is a 256K. So they have 48K of, of RAM. So that's less than half of what the Easy Board has. So, yep. And a slower clock speed, but I'm just beating my EP in here at this point. So, and this is another thing. So people are flashing these RCT6s to have 512K, even though it was disabled by the manufacturer. So you're using like, potentially bad RAM or not RAM potentially bad uh, memory to run your program on. Um, but going off the actual part number, the RCT six, so the STM F one Oh three RX, you got 48 K of memory. So still more than the eight bit boards, but way less, less than half of what the easy board has. So, and that's one of the reasons I picked the LPC for our processor on our board is because it's a freaking monster when it comes to just using it for a 3d printer. So, yep, but that's about it. So we'll be able to run, actually, I might even be able to run the buffer even higher than, uh, than, um, what we're doing now on our easy board. Cause we got so much damn memory on there. We got 128 K of memory on that board and we got 48 K on, uh, this. So, and double the actual program memory. But yeah, um, that's about it. I think uh, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Do you, does anybody have any other questions before I wrap this up? So, and that's where the limitations on these boards and the 8-bit boards are gonna come in um, because they don't have as much memory. Now, we probably are actually gonna be able to run more buffer size on the 1284P than the 2560 because it's got twice the memory of the 2560. So. There's that, but that's stuff we have to account for. And I can easily account for that in the code by setting up if else statements, depending on what printer is uncommented because we know what boards are in which printer. So, and to give you guys an idea, the reason they use these STM chips and a lot of people are, these cost less than a dollar in bulk. The LPCs cost us eight to 10 bucks a piece. So you get what you pay for. Um, 
So, I mean, I have an easy board here, too. So, there's our easy board. Also, much bigger chip. So, and uh, ignore the crappy soldering. This was actually a board a customer fried. And uh, I replaced the CPU and a few other components on here. And I just use this for testing. Um, it works 100%, but I use it as a testing board. That was fun to replace. Can you guys imagine trying to do that? I replaced that with a standard soldering iron. Um, but side by side, you know, there we go. Um, I don't have time to play with Clipper. Last time I did, they didn't have auto bed leveling. So that'll give you an idea of how long it's been since I played with Clipper. Um, does Octoprint plugins also contribute to the buffer starvation? It depends on what, uh, what plugin you're running. Um, if it's a plugin that's not very CPU intensive, eh, probably not going to do anything. Um, but uh, that's about it. Um, I, I'm assuming so. The Octoprint plugin for Kira that might it depends on how it's communicating. If it's communicating over the API, it's probably gonna have less CPU load than actually rendering the whole web interface, but I don't use Kira. Um, I don't even think I have uh, Kira installed on my computer. So, uh, 3D Jimmy, yes I did. There was a bad wire, so I repaired the break in the wire and it's working now. So, Jerry, I will check your PM right now. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so I'll, re I'll send you a message once I'm off here because I'm about to wrap this stream up. So, yeah, Spaghetti Detective is definitely going to increase CPU load, so I would recommend not using it. Octolapse is going to use more CPU load, so I would recommend not using it. Octolapse is a novelty. If you guys actually care about getting your prints done, like the plugins we have in our EasyPie image, they're ones that don't take a ton of resources. They add a bunch of valuable features, but they're not pegging the CPU. So. But yeah, uh, some guy just deleted a bunch of his messages. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Do, do, do. Impala said, keep in mind the environment in Marlin 2.0 to use 512K is overloading into locked CPU area due to noted defects. Yes, that's, I've talked about this. I'm not going to go into this, but there's a reason STM binned these as a 256K chip. It's like Intel disabling cores on, you know, an i9 die and it's now an i5 because it didn't bin. There was problems in the, in the actual wafer. So instead of discarding the whole chip, they mark it down as a lower end one. Yeah, it's it's dumb. I wouldn't I wouldn't do it because like you're saying, if there's if like the watchdog's in the memory area, um, or there's just weird bugs because the memory's corrupt that it's loaded into, you could actually have a fire. So, but luckily, Big Tree Tech's in China. What are you gonna do? Sue them. Um, and plus you're modifying it and using it outside of their recommendations. So I it's not even their fault. Um, it's the user's fault for doing stuff to it that they shouldn't be messing with. Um, if you wanted a board with 512k of memory, you should have bought a board with 512k memory. So. Oh, watchdog issues and locked on heaters have been reported in the Marlin Discord. Yeah, well, I've seen locked on heaters in general with these boards when you just plug them in. So, but that's more than likely a physical design issue, which again, not getting into that. All right, let's go back. Let's switch the focus back to Octoprint. Does anybody have any more Octoprint related questions? Um, old curmudgeon, why are you running two cameras? Put one camera on, be happy with it. <laughs> uh, EM1S1M, I'm not sure what you mean, but shoot a message to our support team. Uh, do, do, do my head blew out purple smoke a while ago. It's all over your head. It's really simple. Your printer pauses because the CPU is overloaded when you load the UI and your printer doesn't have commands to print. So your head pauses and a blob happens because filament oozes out of your nozzle. That's as simple as I can put it. 
keep that silent board cool. Those drivers like to go out because their board does not have enough copper or layers. Um, I'm just scrolling back through chat here. I think it's about it. I, I hopefully have covered everything. Um, was the visual thing I was using with that web service helpful to actually illustrate the point I was trying to make? Um, I was actually pretty happy with it, but if you guys got other recommendations on services like that, um, I would love to have something that I can doodle on and, you know, be able to f show you guys something in real time what's going on. I accidentally closed out that, uh, that tab. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to go get back to it. I got a bunch of stuff going on here today, so but uh yeah i could rant on about creality and putting those chips on boards they have no business being on but we'll save that for another time maybe i'll do a weekly rant <laughs> so yeah i've done i've got a i've got a right here i got a little seek camera that's hooked up to my computer and yeah they run uncomfortably hot um they also run uncomfortably hot on here uh pro tip if you guys see a trinamic board Okay, a board with Trinamics on it, and they require you to put heat sinks on it. That means they cheaped out on the PCB. There's not enough copper. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. If you notice, our board has no heat sinks. Because this is four layers with two outs on every layer. The board is the heat sink. Because these drivers sink heat through the bottom of the chips. Anyways, I will... Uh, I will talk to you guys later. And Jerry, I'll, I'll ping you after I get off here. So everybody, take it easy. This is probably my shortest stream ever, aside from when I had issues and had to stream off my phone. Um, and uh, as always, guys, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Have a good weekend.